<laughs> you won't believe. Hello, everybody. A very good evening to everybody from. A very good evening to everybody. I'm Dorothy Jamanze. I happen to be the host for today, and um, yes, I'm happy to do anything that is going to help with Nigeria being better. I am very happy to to be part of such a process, and you know, today's um, edition is one of the things that I'm very proud to associate myself with. This is, yeah, it's one of the things I'm very proud to associate myself with. And so today we're going to be talking about the role of um, the media in sexual and gender-based violence. You know, does the media promote sexual and gender-based violence? Can the media help fight sexual and gender-based violence? Can actions or inactions of the media affect sexual and gender-based violence? And of course, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to locate how to add up the person who I'm going to be on with to, today. Um, that's um, To Okewale Shonaya, the CEO of Women Radio. I mean, who else to talk about um, today's event? So I'm just trying to get her to join in. I'm trying to add her up so that you know we dive right into it. Of course, for people who don't know me, um, like I said, I am a survivor of sexual and gender-based violence, and um, I'm a survivor of sexual and gender-based violence, and I have, I live my life now trying to help survivors of sexual and gender-based violence to better navigate, you know, the terrains along dealing with sexual and gender-based violence. So while we're talking, I'm actually trying very uh, much to connect with the guests so that we dive right in. That's why it looks like I'm. It it may seem like I look a bit distracted, but I'm not distracted. I'm very much here. So like I said, um, we are we 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 are we, we're in times when every action or inaction of ours determines the fate of our shared humanity. And we cannot talk about sexual and gender-based violence enough. So um, that's why I'm very, 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 very happy to... Um, that's why I'm very, very happy to, to host this. So we're waiting for the guest to join in at any point, And we'll dive right into it. But before she does so, it's important. What's my background? You know, what, what do I know about... Okay. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm about to add her on, and just added her on. Um, it promises to be a very interesting session. I'm very, 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 very happy to have her. Yay, there you are. Very good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? <laughs> Oops, sorry. I have I have a slight um, technical glitch, and I'm trying to fix it in a bit. If you can hear me, hear me? No, I cannot hear you at all. I heard you before, but not now. Okay, I think it's 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 a bit better now. Can you hear me now? No, I cannot hear you. Is I I I cannot oh, wow. hear you. It's very very hollow. Wow wow wow. I heard you loud and clear before. Hmm. My volume is on the highest. But I'm beginning to hear you actually. Ah. Is it any better? Can you hear me now? Not at all. Wow. Um, so, uh, what what would the solution be? I heard, I heard um, Dorothy loud and clear, loud and clear earlier. earlier. Oh, you could hear me loud and clear earlier. How about now? I don't know what happened. Was it on the phone? Yes, most, perhaps it was. So, so Dorothy, I can barely hear you, but okay. I, I guess we can, we can, I can... We can try. 
Okay, let me see. Can can you the viewers can hear me and the viewers can hear you. So perhaps um I don't know I I don't I don't know if we could devise another means of communication. Um Um I don't know. Are you are are you able to Are you able to connect with another source? Can you, can 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 we work with this? I'm happy. I'm happy to work with yeah. Okay, beautiful. So it works for me as well. Great. Um the viewers can hear us. Can it, please if you can hear the both of us, you know, show us some love. If you can hear the both of us, please show us some love in the comment section. Yay! Fine. Great. So, sexual and gender-based violence. Let's jump right into it. I mean, you're an awesome person. I hold you in high esteem and, you know, um women radio is very dear to my heart. But can you can you change the orientation of your of your of your camera? Your lopsided. Can you change the orientation of your camera? I know how that I know how it feels. Oh yes, it's better. Perhaps okay, your headroom so that we see more of you. There's too much headroom. Yay! Perfect picture. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for joining us this evening. Very awesome supporter you are. Very awesome person you are. And so I'll just start off by saying by giving you an opportunity for those who don't know you to appreciate who you are. So, do you want to tell the world about you who is to what makes to tick who is to tell us so that people can appreciate why you are an authority for tonight's topic so my, my name is to try to use an earpiece so that you'll be louder <laughs> I can imagine so that's one of the things that covid-19 has taught us how to do covid-19 has taught us how to all right so is it better a lot better Okay. So I have never ever done. So as I said, I started in broadcasting at this session, and I found myself one way or the other always working with women um, and, and and girls. I worked in the UK um, with uh, an organisation that um, develops women. I worked in the prisons. I work with traffic women, and so you know, um, the opportunity to set up women radio came up, and we set up women radio to amplify the voice of women and girls. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, they said they, they still can't hear you. What do we do about it? Do we try, you know, ha, do we try um, getting you to come right back in? You want to log out and let's have you log back in. All right, I will do that. Yeah. I will do that. Let's have you log back in and then let's see how it goes. All right, I'll do that. Okay, thank you. Oh wow, some people said they started hearing her. Unfortunately, many people were not hearing her and so um let's see. I if we don't have her Okay, we don't have her. Um, so she's going to come right back on and then we'll continue. This is one of the things COVID-19 has taught us. COVID-19 has taught us how to do a lot online and, you know, make the best of the online platforms. Oh, wow, a lot of people said, okay, some people said they could hear. So if she logs right back in, if she joins right back in, you know, we'll dive into the topic and we'll continue from there. Well, like I said, um, so sexual and gender-based violence, I for one know about this topic so much because I am a survivor of sexual and gender-based violence. It's not been easy, but I can tell you that, you know, I, 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 I appreciate everything that I'm doing today because we, we help people better navigate the we're helping people better navigate the spaces when it comes to sexual and gender-based violence. Can it be totally eradicated? I don't know, but with conscious efforts, we can bring it down to the barest minimum. And whenever it happens, we can ensure that there's justice, there are possibilities of you know, um, getting justice for uh, victims of sexual and gender-based violence. Um, sexual violence most definitely would be any kind of violence that has to do, uh, that is meted out on anybody that is sexual in nature, catcalling, um, um, rape. But so many times some people think sexual violence or people talk about sexual violence. A lot of people think it's just rape. No, groping, catcalling, rape. There's all sorts of things, you know, that are, there's all sorts of things that are um, responsible, that, that amount to sexual violence. And so, yeah. Um, we're waiting for we're waiting for Tone to come right back on, so that um, yeah, we're waiting for Tone to come right back on, so that we continue the program. Um, she's supposed to be the guest and not me. I'm just the host for today. Oh yeah, right back. We're hi hi. Yeah, so uh, we're waiting for Tone to send us a request so that we. Okay, so that we uh, will add her right back. I'll send okay. The request. I'll send the request. All right. So any moment from now, Tone is going to be joining us right back, and we will continue. I see her. I see her. Welcome back this way. So can you just say something and let's hear how the audio is this time? Thank you very much, Charles. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. So you are telling us about your journey and you know you know about broadcasting. Broadcasting has been your thing and it has culminated into the women's radio. And so now there is the women's radio. Um let, let let's start with why why the women's radio what's what why the women's radio so um when you want the opportunity to um to apply for radio license there was an that put out by NBC. we applied and we went in the research mode women radio is research Everything we do, we like to involve the audience. 
And so at that time, we were about 30 something or less, just under 30 something radio station in the legal zone. And we have these radio stations doing the backpacking form. So we said, are we not going to join the media space? The same thing people are doing. Remember, my background is even for radio. My boss then pushed me to do a lot of things on the internet. Where I got to meet her, you know, um, um, accomplished female entrepreneurs like the uh, people who know of me, you know, take care of, or you can work. So I moved to the UK, I worked with women as well. Women in prison, women in domestic violence, or women generally. So the idea of let's do this is a channel is a gynecology. So he, 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 he didn't say women. The other director, also in the PR, PR, fashion, but we did we make it together. And so we said, let's try the idea of women. And we pushed the information and we found our research. And research told us that only 70% of media houses in the legal school area focus on women issues. And even the 17% look at women from the point of view of the victims and what have you. Three people, 17% that focus on women uh, programs, 17% from all the legal systems. The presenters, the presenters are usually male. The mm. producers are male. And so we asked women, does this represent us? He was stereotyping it didn't represent us. Okay. There are women who do well in politics, there are women who do well in, in literature, there are women who do well in science, there are women who love sports, there are women who, you know, women do great things. So but pretty much. The way women are stereotyped is it's got to do with, you know, abuse. Okay. And so he mm. said to us, Set up this radio station. Managed with presenters that are female, that represent every woman across the political zones, we will support. And that was how we first had the idea of the marriage. There was also no other radio station that focused That was doing this at the time. So, pretty much. Yeah, so pretty much Women Radio bridged the gap, bridged a gender gap. Absolutely, there was a gap. Oh, awesome. We decided to fill that gap. Awesome. So we've 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 spent you know a good uh, amount of our time on technicalities, and so we'll just dive right into it and try to you know stay five minutes max per question. I'd like to ask you how, in your in your opinion, how we can leverage on the power of media to eradicate sexual and gender based violence in Nigeria. Dorothy, the, the primary role of media, any media, is to inform and to speak for you, the viewer, the reader, the community. Media, in my opinion, is a powerful tool when it comes to spreading information. Also, citizens, I think, should rely more on what comes out of the media organization than what comes out from the president of the state or any nation. So if, if, if the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria comes out to talk, or the Fed or, or Donald Trump comes out to talk, they're going to talk based on what they want you to hear. But the media will not tell you what they want to hear. The media will tell you this is the facts. So from the village in Sokoto to the speak of the letter, media is very powerful. Now talk about radio. Radio is very, very powerful. The, uh, and, and, and of the reason why we need to leverage of media is that media is a community of own. Whatever it is that is happening anywhere in the world, the media brings it to you. So in New York, it was two media that we heard that um, um, Senator Atati allegedly harassed or in New sexually. It is a media that spoke of the remember? Yeah. So the media has a critical role to play. In, in, in ending gender based violence, mm. it has a fundamental role in ensuring that we break the violence culture that surrounds LGBTs. And that's why we need to do everything we can, from radio to TV to newspaper to new media, to ensure that we use media 
the attention of survivors, of victims, and ensure that the justice works. The media is very important. Okay. All right. So, um, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So with the emergence of social media now, for instance, um, in Nigeria, there are over 200 million active users. Um, is social media a threat or is it a blessing or is it both a threat and a blessing in eradicating sexual and gender-based violence, I mean? I think it has been both. It has been especially a blessing in exposing sexual gender-based violence. Um, it has encouraged more we have seen victims and survivors get to go to services to fight at um, such an um, STV. So it has its pros and cons. It has encouraged community and global participation to fight, you know, um, STV. It has encouraged us to share information. In through social media, that you will know that a young girl in Kidawa is being raped by five people, or that a 30 year old son young man is raping an 80-year-old uh, woman. So, yes, we, we have seen communities across the globe and pay justice for Tina, justice for, you know, Uge, and justice for so many women. So it comes with a lot of fun, or a lot of uh, advantage, I think. The, 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 the downside, for instance, media trial, social mm -hmm. media trial, uh, I think it's, it's the downside of uh, social media, you know, because I don't think it's right for us to try people without proper investigation. The victims of survivors are also open to stigmatization, which mm -hmm. can not affect them, as you know, through social media. So the, 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 the risks are there. We saw a young man who, who committed suicide because another young girl called out for being a perpetrator on social media. So that has been fun, that has been fun, but at least it has allowed us to see the, the, the huge, you know, rise in, in, in gender based SGBs. So it wants to uh, pose and fun, and we must, we must utilize uh, the, the most more. Okay, now I'd like us to talk about, you know, the guidelines by the regulatory bodies in handling issues of um, sexual and gender-based violence. You know, what, what guidelines do you know of that exist? And then if there are none, uh, what are the guidelines that journalists can follow in handling cases of sexual and gender-based violence? I mean, there are no strict or laid down guidelines, but NBC has a user code procedure. And any serious media house broadcaster should avail him or herself of the NBC code. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I also say that it's important for journalists and broadcasters to follow the major tenets of journalism, publish back only, get all sides of the story before you push it out. You know, I always say use your dog mood, the, the, the what, the which, the when, the where, and your how. Those are the things. Mm. You make use of your photo because like the one day, most likely, you know, you will do it right. You will help tell proper story, you know. And things like don't reveal minor. But sadly, we see photos of most of minors being blocked because people who do not know are practicing the profession. You know, you have to protect the victim, protect the survivor. You know. And, 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 and look at the case of Isola um, Kapolo in the allegation of rape with uh, a department. You see everybody putting Isola Kapolo out. It is, it, is the, it is the perpetrator photo that should be pushed out. So, you know, it, it, this, these are the basic things that I expect anybody, you know, who is practicing journalism to know. You cannot blame the victim for what she wears. Or, or, or what she said, I say that is why, you know, the proper broadcast the journalist will not do that. When to be inform our audience, so let them know the facts. Educate them. What do I do if I'm a victim? Where should I go? And also, we should challenge the non working system. Let, let's always push for transparency and advocate for accountability. So, as I said, there are no guidelines. The NBC code is there, but as a proper journalist, you know that you have to do fair balancing of the um, reporters. 
Okay, so I'd like to tie this, you know, very quickly to this. Um, recently, we had um, the Minister for Information, Mr. Lai Mohammed, um, you know, um, well, pretty much in line with the reviewed broadcasting code, you know, which now uh, stipulates a stiffer penalty for what is termed hate speech in broadcast. Now, I know for one, being somebody who is very explicit about what it is I'm saying so that there are no people are not in doubt exactly what I'm saying and how I'm saying and why I'm saying it, right? That so many other, so many broadcast organizations started thinking around the lines of being scared of making infra, you know, um, making infractions pretty much or being held liable for infractions because, you know, owing to the broadcast, owing to the broadcast code. And of course, while this um, hate speech thing has been amplified, there's no clear definition of uh, what, or no clear or acceptable definition of what would constitute hate speech. Now, I'm saying this with um, regards to the fact that, for instance, with um, a, a very big issue with sexual and gender-based violence is child marriage, right? And majority of the states that have not domesticated the Child Rights Act are in northern Nigeria. And they pretty much are hiding on the, you know, they're pretty much arguments hiding on the um, traditional, co you know, covers and all those kind of things. So back to it, you know, the regulatory bodies, to what extent have regulatory bodies been sensitive in, you know, their thoughts about sexual and gender-based violence? Would you say that what the regulatory bodies have currently, you know, have holistically considered the impact of sexual and gender-based violence, considering what is currently obtainable, and I'm talking specifically with a view to addressing the issue of hate speech, and of course with the Abuja raids and people like me coming out to say, "Hey, you have no right to, you know, um, you have no right to harass any woman or replace the rights of a woman with your morality policing, amongst other things." There were conflicts of, "Oh, this is hate speech. It's hate speech." You don't speak against the government. So do you think that what the regulatory bodies currently has, you know, is sufficient enough to ensure that it doesn't um, further amount to perpetrating sexual and gender-based violence? So um, let me quickly say that um, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, hate speech is the act of harassing or encouraging violence towards the person mm. or group based on something such as race, religion, sexual or sexual orientation. It's supposed to encourage violence. That is the word for me. That is the phrase for me. Mm. You know, this speech has to encourage violence. As a broadcaster and as a journalist, if you are telling the story the way it is, and you are not inciting, you should not use a platform to incite. So, so, you know, with regard to um, the minister and his and SGBC. For me, we will continue to tell the story the way we do. Mm. We have not been found wanting to do it. Radio and TV are regulated by the MC. And NBC and Father are doing a good job holding us accountable. Right? However, NBC cannot be in every state. They cannot and cover what is all the other houses. So I, I call it self responsibility right? We are more careful, especially in gathering and investigating cases that have to do with STPD. Mm. So if you hold your facts, look, Dorothy, when the police arrested you in Abuja, FCT, we were aware of it, but we never spoke about it. Yeah. Because we got the facts from me. And we also tried, we also contacted the police as well. So we told all sides of the story. Mm. That cannot be classified as a speech. Yes, the police have issues with my children. We have experts. That's why I can say this here. The police needs to be to be trained and retrained and retrained. They don't have a clue when it comes to her is be That's all. And so nobody can tell me this. Because I have evidence of it. Mm. There is a woman we are working with on women radio. This is my colleague Victoria supported her and she had to go to the police station. 
the woman on duty, the female officer on duty, asked her to kneel down and apologize to her husband. We have evidence of the video where he nearly killed her. But you know what? He was a male police officer <laughs> that made that man sleep at the police station that night. So the police needs help. Mm. They need, they need help. It's more hasty. So as long as you know what you are doing, if I had my back as my speaker, the Minister for Information cannot penalize me. Yes. Cannot penalize me. As Good. long as I'm not using that back to insert. Yeah. Now, very, very closely tied to this is something that, I, I mean, the first time I was sexually violated, I was a child. And so issues of child sexual abuse is something that um, I, I would never tolerate. I, I can't tolerate. It still affects me till today, right? Now, if I'm called on a radio program or a TV program in Abuja here, for instance, and I'm supposed to talk about child sexual abuse in the morning for the benefit of children, I can't use the words penis or vagina on air. But those are parts of the body, just like the head, the hand, the legs, and, uh, you know. So, do we not see... So, uh, the, the hypocrisy that comes with that, where it translates to a disadvantage in the fight against sexual and gender-based violence, is where uh, perpetrators get across to children and they violate children. The same children that are shielded from knowing the names of their body parts or the functionalities of their body parts and everything are expected to go to the police station amidst, uh, you know, all the crises that is there and express themselves like, oh, this part of my body was violated in this way. Don't you feel that that's a big problem with, you know, the regulatory bodies? Because it's super huge. A lot of people are scared of bringing me on their radio programs, you know, at certain times of the day because they say, oh, the words you use are very explicit, but these are parts of the body. So what, what, do, you, what do you think about this? Um, the, the, the world is changing. Um, through the NBC quote, um, stops on, does not allow us to use a word um, at a certain time. There's a threshold. But... Um, we are talking to the ministers of the talking to the people that we are talking to the different ministers. I'm having a meeting with the Minister of Education tomorrow, for instance. Because women radio and we are not we have we have organized over 40 programs based on radio and on radio. Mm. And we spoke to um, including yourself, we spoke to victims and survivors of me, we spoke to three perpetrators. One that has stuck his staff, one that is still going through um, um, the traditional system. We spoke to children, um, we spoke to imams and pastors, we spoke to traditional rulers. We have been able to come up with a profile of the rapist. And so, what Women Radio and We Are Better will be doing now is to profile the rapist in young children. Mm. And my target audience are young children from family school and secondary school. We don't have problems with the private school. But that's why we're meeting with the Minister of Education tomorrow. We're mm. also meeting with the Minister of Information and Women Affairs so that we can explain to them that one of the ways of preventing this happening is for us to tell a child this is called penis, this is vagina. This is your breast. This is your anus. Yes. They belong to you. There's a reason why they are called private parts. Because they belong to you only, privately. So if we do not explain this to them, then we are making a mockery of the fight to end gender violence. So I agree with you. Radio and TV do not allow us to do this. We can do it on social media, but we are explaining to the decision makers, our minister, that we need to do it. Something to do it. Exactly. And so I know it's the process, and I'm sure we will get there. Radio is very powerful, but I'm not advised to report it, especially in the northern area. In everywhere. So don't call this thing, don't glamorize, don't glamorize me. I call that by the name. 
Exactly. Because if you, if you say this is your sweet, for instance, this, this is your sweet instead of saying your vagina, the man that is going to be talking to the outside will be using vagina. Exactly. Exactly. So I agree with you, but we will we will work with us to change some of the things in the in the coach. Exactly. 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 Thank you very much. You know, I mean, we've seen a lot of oh, um, uncle put his pee pee in in my mouth. Oh, no, uncle put his banana in my mouth. So you're teaching parents that it's not okay to be comfortable to talk about these things. Yeah. And in, by extension, the parents are teaching the children that penis is but banana. Um, uh, the vagina is cherry cherry. Uh, kuchi All those things. I mean. But how does it translate in the events that is a violation? These are things that we should look at. Now, okay, so in this age and era where the, you know, media, where a lot of media organizations are all about who broke the news first, you know, without necessarily doing the work of fact-checking to hear from both sides of the divide, what can be, sol- you know, what can be done to solve this debacle? So, um, you know, um, there's something I call... I mean, there's no other way but to investigate all points and publish the facts. Mm-hmm. And then there are, there are no two ways about it. Where it is an allegation made clear to all. But so evil, I necessarily sexually abused the last people. It has been that day. Exactly. Senator Amadio allegedly sexually so, so let us, you know, let that let that be a clear understanding mm. of what we need to do. Yeah. And not commit an innocent person. Okay. Before you go to the judge. Mm. So the media should remain neutral while pushing for job to save the fact. And allow your audience to take an important decision. Yeah. So, you see, when the, when the, the other challenge I have, it is in this side of the world mm. that before the case is 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 sorted out in the court, the police, even the judiciary, they already talked about it on the pages of newspapers. You mm. don't hear that in, in other times. Because you're already infiltrating evidences and probably pressure on people. So the job of the media is just report the thing. Give the facts that you know about it. Mm. And hopefully our judicial system will be alive and we will not drag the case and give room for false accusations. So it is the responsibility of the media to constantly hold the judicial system accountable securely on and let us report the facts. Yeah. So, I mean, I. I, I, I say that at you, mm. we, we don't push to break the news. There, there, are, there are organizations, the media, who are very good. They have lives virtually everywhere. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have that luxury, right? So, we get the news, we don't all find out our research from the female perspective. Yeah. And hear from the or the perpetrator or the alleged perpetrator. Mm. So it's not about breaking the news. It's, it's about, about credibility. So on women radio, there are some ministers who don't do for a newspaper review. There are some media houses, there are some newspapers we don't talk. For reasons of credibility. So, and that's why it's been long time, it's been long time. Most, most credibility is key. Yes. Yes. I, I totally agree with you. My friend, uh, Lola, the ones that would always say, if, if it's not facts, it's, it cannot be news. If it was not the truth, it can never be the news. Yes, and uh, of course, in line with what we just spoke about, you know, the Elisha Bo story was visible to everybody. It was clear. It was a video in which, you know, a human being assaulted another human being. And so, you know, 
the people when people report such cases and they go oh alleged the 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 perpetrate you know alleged this alleged that that was very clear it was visible to everybody who had eyes you know an assault actually did happen it was visible it's still all over the internet it's very visible <laughs> Okay, right? Yes. So remember the court right? Mm. Even when you see something that you have evidence, if there's a technical piece in the court of law, that case will be thrown out. Yeah. So even when you have the evidence in your hand, you don't record it. If there may be a technical reason why it will be thrown out. Mm. And that's why we have to be careful how we report, how we summarize. And mm. how we do our own stuff in the media. This is why I'm telling you that in other crimes, the police will follow you through. The court will follow you through. The regular agencies will give their evidence to you. And even they will be protected. Mm. The victims, and the people who are reporting, will be protected. So there are so many things that they need to put in place to ensure to, to that, you know, all the loopholes are so in the case of Elisha, I don't feel that we should also use the media now to keep saying that what we saw this. Yes. So if that is a technical problem, and the lawyers go back and look at that. Exactly. Exactly, because what was done was in no way, and it, it was not pampering, it was not, it was assault, it was very clear. Anyway, let's so just... Why, why, um, uh, Victor, and, um, yes. Uh, and, uh, and I to say to us that, look, check all the evidence. Exactly. Because that's what you do at the point of the If you are if you are sexually abused, please check all the evidence. Mm. Exactly. Because, because at the end of the day, we don't on social media will be crying and, 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 and the perpetrator will walk away. Yeah. So, um... I now, something that seems to be very trendy for a lot of people is what they claim, you know, to be false accusations. Of course, anybody can make an allegation, anybody can make an accusation, but who decides whether it is true or false and what can the media do in, you know, um, following the trend of the story? Um, at some point, you, you referenced the, sto the story of the young man who took his life. Truth about it for it, us is that Taking his life does not prove that he is innocent of the charge of, of the accusations. That's the truth about it. And it, it didn't have to be on social media. Whether it was on social media or not, the fact that people have been, you know, discovered over time has made people to do so many things that we ended up thinking were not the smartest of things to have done. But, you know, false accusations with sexual and gender-based violence what 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 are your what are your thoughts what can how can the media help you know in this we have a lot of it with reports of um issues that border around husbands and wife you know especially domestic violence there's a lot of accusations that fly from different places but with false accusations where where does the media come in with in, in all of this and what role does the media play uh, Very true. So what are the remedies in the event of false accusations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But you know that you cannot use it. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's no other way but to make it on all fronts and all sides. That mm. is what we do. Remember, it's not everybody that you are social media and it's a broadcaster on each other. Right? So, a proper broadcaster to proper journalist, you will, you will, you will make, you will, you will carry out your investigation. Mm. And if you're not sure, you will be saying that this is an allegation. So, so it's, it's as simple as they be. Let's investigate, let's see how we information. But most importantly, verify the source of information. Oh, yeah, okay. Don't, don't, take, don't, don't take a responsibility for what you want to know. We need to stay neutral. It's very mm. We need to push for justice on the global scale too. Simple. Okay, so um, there's the fear of being stigmatized when cases of sexual and gender-based violence are public. Hence, the regular notion to keep quiet. So what can be done to effectively drive conversations um, on the need for people to report incidences without the fear of being ostracized or treated differently? What can the media do? So, um, let me... Totally agree. I, I hear you. I hear you very well. I do hear you, and it's it's very valid. There's a ripple effect for you know the actions and inactions of there's a, there's a ripple effect. I totally agree with you with that. And then um, so there's also this thing about people are more interested in okay bearing the news at the first time when the news has broken, yeah, and they don't do follow ups with the news so something has happened what else happened afterwards reporting when the case goes to reporting when the case goes to court people don't there's, there seems to be a fatigue i understand that so many uh, you know media houses need to make money i understand that but for many of us that are on the front of you know the, uh, in the field of sexual and gender-based violence we usually do not have money and so engaging the media seems to be very expensive, except when it has led to the death of a woman or a child or a human being. And then it becomes, oh, dog bites man kind of story, uh, man bites dog kind of story, you know. So, you know, do you think the media is doing enough in giving an apportioning time, you know, for, for to sexual and gender-based violence? And I'll say this, you know, with, uh, let me give a little more background to what I, what I have in mind. During election periods, there are different kinds of things that happen. Polling booths are usually not accessible to everybody. 
but there are sexual and gender-based violence crimes that are committed during election periods. But we don't hear, we, they are very underreported, they all, except unless it leads to the death of somebody. So the, if COVID-19 came, the, the sexual and gender-based dynamics to COVID-19 were underreported, you know? And so it still boils down to the gendered lens. And us thinking that on, if it affects women, it's not newsworthy enough. Very briefly, what do you think the media can do to give, to, to give a human face for the, for the sake of our shared humanity? Because we don't know who the next victim would be. So, um, Dorothy, besides that we're talking about, we know that media is the point. Yes. And I think there should be more women to Mm. I feel there should be. You know that we are trying to help them. Yes. To the sense that um, all these chocolates go to. The reason I'm saying this is look, every media house has a vision. Every organization has a vision. Mm. Right? We have to support and support media houses that focus on. Mm. So for them to now start focusing on issues of LGBT, you, you may be pushing them the way. Of the vision like that might be. Even step back, even step back, even step back. Um, what we have been able to do is to appeal to the um, maybe conscience or this part of the life, right? Yes. The few media houses. I don't want to start mentioning their names. Okay, that's fine. We need a few media houses who are all, you know, reporting and issues of gender disparity. No. Like they are, they are. But you said something, they do not follow up. Yes. The reason they don't follow up is that maybe that is not their mandate. Mm. Right? And I cannot speak for them. They have reported it and that is it. They might have the life of women we do. Look at the documentary we did on Yah Sharifu. How many people remember Yah Sharifu? Mm. They want to talk to them because they don't say anything about Yah Sharifu on the stage. So, you know, they report me, they break the news, and they move on. I feel that a few other house media have to stop the on the door of to keep reporting and keep ending this my level. Look at the state of the police who died. Yeah. Who died. Yeah. Who died. Yes. Who died. Yes. Who died. Who else is talking about it? Who else is talking about it? Mm. So, I understand that we need to, we need to keep talking to especially the big media houses that you need it is it is a it is a starting to be mm. everybody has a mother everybody has a sister everybody has a daughter and there's a female in your house and it could happen, happen to anybody so yes we just need to appeal to the media houses to help us push this out yeah. So that it's not the job of women to do it because it affects all of us. I agree with you. I agree very strongly with you. And the other thing to do is that you can just keep sending your videos, keep sending your press releases to media houses. Mm. Because sometimes that is not their memory, that is not their team. So you may think to keep sending the videos to media houses, but you have to be able to keep them. But honestly, Nigeria media houses. The TV has been fine, the newspapers have been fine, radio stations have been fine, but we see that there's no doubt about that. Follow through and carry out what that is the business and reporting. I totally agree with you. Um, something else I, I find very, you know, very, I find missing so many times is the fact that a lot of information is out there, but we don't have a breed of people in the media, in so many of the media outlets that are willing to investigate or willing to read or willing to question things or willing to do the appropriate thing. And that's actually the fun. That's the best part of journalism. You know, I mean, that's my background. I'm a trained journalist. That's my oh, background. Policy. Yes. Policy. Yes. You, you, you need to spend money to carry out investigation. I agree you with you. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. But okay. while we're doing that, if... If it's a habit, then it means that people would even get to know the art. The art of doing it is lost, even where the news is right there in people's faces. They don't see it. I'll give you a typical example. Abuja raids. When the Abuja raids thing started, despite the fact that there was a court judgment in the Dorothy Jamazi and three others versus the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
a landmark court judgment that existed, media houses were still making excuse for violation of women. So that culture of researching, people still make excuses, people still report cases of domestic violence and say, oh, she, did, she didn't want to respect her brother, the, the, brothers, the brother of her husband. Meanwhile, this is you know, something the husband and wife worked for. They don't know the contents of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. They don't know the contents of the Child's Rights Act. They're not doing enough to shame the people who have not implemented it. They're not doing comparative analysis between what is happening in the cities so that when something happens, at, like there's a, um, a court judgment in the cities, in the urban areas, you can compare it with your village back home. And that could inspire. I, so I think that people in the media houses need to think out of the box and think to connect humanity. That, that there's something missing somewhere, you know. So finally, I fully, I fully, I fully agree with you that there has to be some form of action. Yes. For you to do this. Look, some of the things you do on your own, right? You don't have much for you. Mm. But because we're women, we don't need to do it. And I agree that media houses need to be looking at that. But remember, mm. remember, right? Funding. You pay the bills. You know, I know. Money to pay the bills. I totally agree. Okay, Alpha, Alpha Human and every other person, I see you all with your comments. I see you all. Unfortunately, remember that technical hitches took majority of our time at the beginning, and so there's not much. We can't dwell on the comments, but we see the comments and they're very valid. Thank you for also sharing this with other people. In closing, very seriously, what are, your, what are your parting words? What are your final words? And I'm asking this question with a view to help, you know, having you um, amplify on the gender lens, the gender lens, how things affect women, because how things affect women end up being the bane of sexual and gender-based violence. Women are predominantly, women and girls are predominantly victims of sexual and gender-based violence. I always use the word predominantly because men and boys are also victims. But because we haven't built strong enough systems and we've thought, and the reason we've not built strong enough systems is we've, we've held on to the fact that women are predominantly the victims and we've not seen it as human enough worth investment. So the gender lens is very important, you know, to, to look into. So what would be your final words? What would be your parting words? Between the gender lens, I love the because gender is both male and female. Yes. One of five is war is low. Important. Okay. 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 
We're out of time. We're out of time. Unfortunately, we're out of time. But thank you for joining in and thank.